Hi, I'm Diana Belker, pastor of First Congregational United Church of Christ in Santa Rosa. This is Sermons to Go. I want to start this morning. Um, actually, let's start with prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be open and be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So let's play a game. Now, please stay muted. Won't um, It will just be very short. You can play from right where you are. I'm going to give you a marketing slogan and I want you to fill in the blanks. Ready? Okay. 15 minutes could save you. I hope you got 15%. That's Geico. It's the little lizard whom I think is precious. Here's the next one. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Right. How about you're in good hands with all state. Yeah, insurance companies, they make some fabulously catchy commercials, don't they? It's funny to me that when I was trying to think about marketing and insurance companies, I could just pop these off. They're right on the top of my head, even though I really don't have a television set to watch them, but somehow they're everywhere when I turn on my computer or on my phone, whether it's YouTube or Facebook. It seems like these ads just pop up. And I have noticed a trend over the past, I don't know, five or 10 years maybe. It seems like insurance is no longer for just those really big things in life, like life insurance or car insurance or home insurance. You know, these things that, that I think of as insurance protects us against catastrophe. But now we have insurance for things like loss or damage to an iPhone, flight insurance, vacation insurance, and even policies for your pets. Now, these all make some sense to me, but today we can buy insurance for almost anything. For instance, stores like Amazon and Target are getting in on this action. Small household appliances, small electronic devices now come with an option to purchase insurance for them. Now I know they don't call it this, they call it a protection plan, but it's insurance. I purchased a food processor at the start of the pandemic and received this little pop-up that said, do you want to protect your purchases for another four bucks or something like that? Now I, I feel like I'm going to show my age saying this, but I figure a name brand small appliance should last on its own for a few years. But clearly that is now no longer the expectation. And it goes the other way too. I've read some about some famous people insuring parts of their bodies. Yeah, a guitarist's finger, a model's legs, a chef's taste buds, because without which their careers would be over. Reality check, your career will change and yes, come to an end one day, no matter what. But for enough money, someone is willing to take the risk to insure almost anything. I wonder if those types of risks are worthy of our precious time and resources on this earth. I wonder what is driving our fear? What is driving all of our insecurity? Because we would probably not be bombarded by insurance commercials if they were not making money selling their products. 
And I wonder about what this is saying about the status quo, not of our possessions, but of our bodies and our souls. Where is our trust? Where is our hope? And what are we really buying into? I think we're probably buying into security. And listen, security is something we all want and strive to maintain. And it's also an illusion. I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite theologian poets, and I'm going to butcher her name, uh, Dorothy Sole. Yeah, I, I didn't get that right. Mm, I'll try again another time. I'm going to quote Nancy Blakely, who describes her and her work like this. Dorothy was born in Germany in 1929 and grew up during the years of Hitler and the Nazi regime. Her writings are theological reflections on coming to grips with the horrors of the concentration camps and life after World War II, and realizing that her heritage of Protestant liberalism had failed to stop the war. And so in her work, she challenges the human propensity for wanting to feel safe, to feel secure from any threat by seeking that from God, by seeking security from God, in her essay, Peace, Not Security, in her book, Essential Writings, she notes that, quote, change happens at the level of action that contains risk. I'm going to say that again. Change happens at the level of action that contains risk. And later in one of her essays called Jesus' Death, she goes on to write that because you are strong in Christ, you can put the neurotic need for security behind you. You do not need to defend your life like a lunatic. For the love of the poor, Jesus says, you can give your life away and spread it around. Which makes me think to our scripture today. Those disciples gather together in fear. They are looking for security. They are trying to figure out a way forward in the midst of their grief and their disbelief and their great insecurity and terror from the events of the past week or so. And Jesus shows up and he says, peace be with you. He does not show up and offer security. He does not show them how to be more successful in fortifying their lodging from Roman soldiers or how to fortify their hearts from the pain that they're feeling. Rather, he invites them to take down their defenses and become vulnerable to the emotions they are experiencing in that moment. They are afraid. Jesus invites them to touch his hands and his feet. And then their fear turns to joy and disbelief and they say, is this a ghost? And Jesus asks for something tangible to eat. And once the disciples are calmed down a bit and can breathe a little easier, Jesus opens their minds and invites them not towards security, but back out into the world as witnesses, back into the world that is filled with fear and risk and uncertainty. And isn't that just like Jesus? Because Jesus doesn't sell insurance. Many times he doesn't even allow the disciples to pack a bag with supplies. Rather, he invites the disciples away from their securities and towards a life of witnessing and hope, towards risking love for others rather than for their own safety. And this is quite the challenge, especially to those of us living today in the 21st century. We can really put our money around and, and be pretty secure or, or it might feel as if we can be pretty secure. So I wonder, what might risking security for hope, risking security as a witness, look like in our situations? And then what would be worth that risk? What might that hope look and feel like that would get us out of our need for staying secure? Blakely also shares a story of two women who were 9-11 widows, and they were grateful for the outpouring of support they received. And they started thinking about the women in Afghanistan who, when they are widowed, 
lose their status in that society, and therefore find their already difficult lives even harder. So these two American women raised money and formed a foundation called Beyond the Eleventh to support Afghani widows, and they have even made visits to Afghanistan to meet the women that they were helping. And for them, these connections have helped to make sense of the world around them. They model for us the gift of open and understanding minds and hearts, and what it is to reclaim an ancient practice of hospitality for the stranger. These women received, received support, security, and they gave themselves away to others. They are witnesses to what is possible, for they are taking risks and making a difference with other widows just like them. Money, insurance policies, protection plans might be able to reimburse our bank accounts, but they cannot shield us from the grief that comes with disappointment or the fears that accompany risk and change. And we know, frustratingly, that Jesus does not offer us security. He offers us words of comfort, and when we are settled down and able to hear it, sometimes he offers to open our minds and send us off as witnesses. For Christ did not come to bring us security, but to open us, our minds, our hearts, our lives, that we might go out and risk loving others. Love does not come with an insurance policy, nor hopefully does it need one. Thanks be to God. Amen.